We have more changes unfolding at the Federal Reserve and in a small quaint town in Davos, Switzerland. Changes that have the Uber Elite class gathering together this week, meeting to discuss their plans for a global future, the global order, how to secure more control over our lives in a way that they believe will better humanity as a whole. And one of those ways is the implementation of a CBDC, a centralized bank digital currency. A lot of new information coming to light this week on the Fed's plan to roll out their digital dollar. We've seen the updates to their FedNow program, but there's much, much more happening in the background. Well, we stumbled across this Federal Reserve research paper, docket number 1670, called the Federal Reserve Actions to Support Interbank Settlement of Faster Payments. It's a notice that's sent out to the Fed's Board of Governors, and it is odd. It's strange, to say the least, changing the definition of a currency in this document, or rather adding to it, adding to the definition, adding a fourth attribute to the definition of a currency, they say, social control. That's the new attribute. Very odd report. But before we get started, thank you for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out. And if you're not already a subscriber uh, to the channel, make sure to do that so you continue to receive these regular updates. Also, check out our new daily show over at the Notify America YouTube channel. The link is in the description. The Federal Reserve, giant bank, the mother of all banks, and they are getting ready to implement a giant rug pull on the American economy. We all know the debt crisis in this country is out of control. We've amassed more debt in just the last few years than the annual GDP of most countries combined. Just in the last three years, federal government has borrowed $10 trillion, $10 trillion with a T. It's unsustainable. Makes no sense. If you were running a business and you had a deficit like this, you would have no choice but to cut costs, get your house in order. But the U.S. government does the complete opposite. We ramp up our spending, borrowing like it's 2020, borrowing like we're in a pandemic, but there is no pandemic. We are just still borrowing like there is. And eventually, it's going to reach a point where the world loses faith in the U.S. dollar, a currency that is really no better at this point than Bitcoin. Both are backed by nothing. Richard Nixon removed the dollar from the gold standard 50 years ago, one of the biggest mistakes a U.S. president has ever made, in my opinion. Well, in the meantime, as our debt explodes and wars rage around the globe, What's our Federal Reserve doing? They're preparing, researching for the implementation of their own CBDC, a centralized bank digital currency, a digital dollar. Something that on the surface sounds great. Here's how they pitch it, ready? It would simplify life, which is undeniable, by the way. It, it would make easier, it would make it easier and virtually effortless to move money, pay your bills, eliminate all the hassle of middlemen like banks, to settle transactions for all you business owners out there. No more credit card processors. Imagine that, eliminating credit card processors. I mean, to me, that sounds like a dream. Well, is it a dream or is it a nightmare? I'd say the latter, as all those benefits that come with it will be how they sell the idea to you, sell the idea to the American public. We're making your life easier, will save you money. No more fees from your bank. No more hassle filing your taxes and all the rest. We can easily stop illicit transactions, all of that kind of thing. But with those benefits come a whole cadre of issues. First and foremost, privacy and, and government control. The entire concept of crypto, by the way, is for a world of decentralization. But CBDC, it's all in the name. Centralized bank digital currency. It's not a decentralized bank digital currency. And if it wasn't 2024, and we didn't just all go through what we lived through these past few years, the pandemic years, it's likely selling all of this to the public would have been easy, but it's not. As we now know so much more about how the government really wants to run our lives, the impulse for totalitarianism is real. Regardless which side of the aisle you sit, can't deny establishment Washington wants more control. We saw it over the last few years, government lockdowns, jab passports, six foot distancing rules, just to name a few. Overnight, over 33 million Californians ordered to lock down as coronavirus cases across the state soar and the number of available ICU beds falls. 
We need to do everything we can to stem the tide. The three-week order, now in place for much of northern, central, and southern California, prohibits in-person dining and gatherings, restricts all store capacity to 20%, and shutters salons, playgrounds, and museums. Well, now imagine what the pandemic would have been like, what it would have looked like if we already had a CBDC rolled out. Try to imagine how easy it would have been to enforce all those crazy policies. Jab passports, for instance. You want to fly from New York to L.A.? Well, your jab passport says you're not up on your shots. Sorry. Digital wallet is locked for airline purchases. There's just countless examples that I could give that would prove the point, but I'll save the time because if you think your government is, is still on your side with this, they'd never do such a thing. Well, let me introduce you to docket number 1670 on the Federal Reserve's website called the Federal Reserve Actions to Support Interbank Settlement of Faster Payments Memorandum. It's a notice <clears throat> that's sent to the Fed Board of Governors. This is the actual document. You can find it on their website. They go into the benefits of moving to a CBDC, to a digital dollar. And in the process, they lay out the definition of money, the definition of a currency. What is a currency, they say? Well, according to the Fed, they list three attributes that technically form a currency. But then after that, they explain how a CBDC adds a fourth attribute, a new attribute, effectively rewriting the definition of a currency in this document. And what is the fourth attribute that they cite? Social control. They actually write that. You can't make this stuff up, folks. Look at this. The main economic attributes of a technically effective currency rest on three functions as a unit of account, a store of value, and as a medium of exchange. But there's a fourth function of money as a means of social control. The centralized monopoly over the functions of money held by sovereign governments and central banks has generated great income and wealth imbalances. Concerns about a lack of central bank performance with respect to financial inclusion, income inequality, economic system stability, and the tendency of central banks to intermediate on behalf of large financial institutions supported the creation of cryptocurrency. Then they go into, is a Fed coin feasible, etc. Craziness, folks. This is bananas. This is the time when this CBDC push really began, by the way, around the time this document was sent back in 2019. Then after this is when we saw President Biden sign Executive Order 14067, which effectively talks about implementing a CBDC in America. And since then, all the heads of state, titans of industry, the executives at these big banks have all been running wild with this idea. European countries are loving it. The EU is moving full steam ahead with this. The UK wants a CBDC of their own. Here's their, here's their current prime minister, informing the people of England what a CBDC is and why it's a good thing. Watch this. Today, I'm proud to say that under the UK's presidency, the group of the world's seven most advanced economies, the G7, is launching a set of public policy principles for retail central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Central bank digital currencies could be a digital version of money, a bit like a digital banknote that could be used alongside physical notes and coins. Unlike most of the digital money people use daily today, it would be issued directly by a central bank, like the Bank of England in the UK. And governments and central banks across the world are working together, looking into what having a digital currency might mean in practice. This includes issues that people care about, such as ensuring users' money would be safe and secure, that it could work with other ways to pay, would be energy efficient and available to everyone. So... Where are we now? Well, I feel like a lot of people have been educated to the risks associated with the CBDC, especially on social media. We've also seen members of the Republican Party come out opposed to this idea. Also, a poll conducted recently by the Cato Institute in May of 2023 found that only 16% of Americans would support the government issuing a central bank digital currency. And look at the breakdown by party. The orange bar is if you're opposed to it. 53% of Republicans said they were opposed. Only 22% of Democrats oppose it, though. So with numbers like this, with the, American public, with the American public clearly not being on board with it, will they still move forward? Well, in Davos, Switzerland this week, the WEF held their annual summit where world leaders 
come together and discuss the future of humanity, the plans for our shared future. People like Bill Gates, Larry Page from Google, also countless others, kings, queens, princes, princesses attend this event. It's like a who's who for the powerful elite. And guess what they were discussing? CBDCs. They are still on the table in a big way. Here's some of the video from their 2024 summit this week. Watch. If you think about the benefits of digital money, there are huge potential gains. It's not just about uh, digital forms of physical currency. You can have programmability, you know, um, units of central bank currency with expiry dates. You could have, as I argue in my book, a potentially better and yeah, some people might see it or a darker world where the government decides that units of central bank money can be used to purchase some things, but not other things that it deems less desirable. We're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned. We don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. Now, am I opposed to a CBDC? Yes, anything that centralizes crypto is a bad thing. Anything that gives the government more control is something I personally don't think we should ever do. Patriot Act, for instance, still in effect for crying out loud. Government always seems to obtain more control, which is why the only way to keep up is to constantly be trying to rein in their control. That's just you know my point of view, but let me know what you think in the comments. Would you support this? genuinely curious your thoughts on it all right that wraps up this episode like subscribe and we'll see you next time also don't forget to check out our new daily show at the notify america youtube channel the link is in the description